All right, everyone, welcome back. So as you can tell, this is the final clinching video uh, besides the wild card teams. The New York Islanders have officially clinched a playoff spot in the 2024 Stanley Cup playoffs. They have returned for a second straight year, and they look better than they did last year. So that's why I think this series could be pretty damn close. I'm not going to lie to you guys. So let's get into the stats here. I'm going to start off straight away because I have a very important Flyers game to get to up there. Uh, but the Islanders are currently 38, 27, and 16 for 92 points, and they are 15th in the NHL. They have scored 241 goals, led in 259, actually. They are 20, 10, and 10 at home, and they're 18, 17, and 6 on the road. So there's a few numbers here that I'm a little bit concerned with, but I mentioned in a few of my Islanders videos over the last couple of months that I do think that this team is going to get taken lightly and they could potentially upset a team in the first round. I don't know if it's Carolina. I don't know if it's some other team later on in the playoffs, but I really do think that the Islanders could upset some teams for sure. Well, they obviously need to upset Carolina if they want to upset anyone else, but I think it's possible. Is the is the goal differential concerning? Not not too much. It's a little it's a little strange though, and I know people are going to look at the overtime losses. Uh, oh, they have sixteen overtime points, and they could have seventeen tomorrow. I understand that, but at the same time, um, a lot of that wasn't like the Islanders just being oh, you know, we're just going to take the overtime point. Uh, they've been blowing leads left and right, so that 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 was not fun. But it was looked at about like maybe two months ago when when Lane Lambert was fired that this team wasn't going to go far. They weren't going to win anything in the playoffs, or they weren't going to make the playoffs. And then they they fire Lambert, they bring in Patrick Waugh, and suddenly this team goes on a hot streak, and now they're locked for third. Obviously, with teams finishing uh, and doing worse than them below them, obviously that helps out them too. But, of course, uh, that definitely plays a factor. So let's get into the scores here. you got Matthew Barzal first in scoring. 80 games played, 23 goals, 57 assists for 80 points. An often overlooked player by many of many people in the NHL. Barzal's had a really good season. Uh, he's going to be point per game um, if he gets two against Pittsburgh. He's been a player who I've really enjoyed watching this year in a lot of the Islanders games that I've witnessed. Um, there's definitely been some good ones, too, where Barzal's really come up clutch. Uh, for the Islanders, for sure. Second in scoring is Noah Dobson. Dobson is going to get Norris votes. I don't know if he's a final, a finalist for the Norris, but he's going to get some votes for sure. 79 games played, 10 goals, 60 assists for 70 points. He's had an amazing year. He's been incredibly valuable to a lot of what the Islanders' scoring has been contributed towards. He's also not that bad defensively either. So having a guy who's good offensively and good defensively, obviously, are two polars. Are, are two things that help out a lot when you're trying to put together a good blue line. So a guy like Dobson has been incredibly valuable to this Islanders defense. So I think he's going to get in the worst votes. I don't know if he, I don't think he wins it. I think, I think it's going to be between McCarr and, and Hughes. Um, Bouchard's in that conversation too. Roman Yossi, Adam Fox. So there's a lot of arguments there for guys you could make as legitimate Norris candidates. When the finalists do get released, I will be making a video predicting and announcing the and announcing them and thinking who I who is going to win. Uh, because I do think this year is really interesting. I feel like it's a lot. I feel like it's kind of up in the air. I do think we know the consensus, but we'll see. Uh, third in scoring is Bo Horvat. Horvat with 80 games played, 33 goals, 35 assists for 68 points. Listen, I don't think his contract is worth 70 points, a 70-point score, but I still do think he's been better than we thought he was going to be this year. A lot of people read him off as a guy who was going to fall off next season and not have a great year. I think 70 points is where we realistically see Horvat finish now for the coming weeks and weeks and months, but I really do think that Horvat could be a clutch player come playoff time. He is a guy who I look at, and I think if you're looking for a goal, it could be a guy like Horvat, because I believe he does. He is tied for the league lead, um, or the, the league lead, the team lead in scores. And that's that's insulting, considering Matthews just scored 70. But r regardless, um, Horvat has been impressive this year for the Islanders. Fourth in scoring is Brock Nelson. Nelson, 81 games played, 33 goals, 34 assists for 67 points. I really still do believe this. I think I think Nelson's one of the more underrated players in the National Hockey League. I don't think he gets a lot of recognition for what goes on 
um, with the Islanders, and I think Nelson's played a huge role in that this year, especially scoring a lot of really clutch goals for this team when they needed them. So Nelson, a player who's been really effective. And then fifth in scoring is Kyle Palmieri. Palmieri kind of rising from the dead, to be honest with you. This season, he's 81 games played, 29 goals, 24 assists for 53 points. A lot of people probably forget that Palmieri's still in the league. People probably think that he's gone, like at this point. But he's still playing, and he's still scoring at a pretty decent rate. 55, 60-point score is kind of where he's going to finish at. So I like seeing that there from a guy like Palmieri, who I really enjoy with the Devils, but has been a guy who has come up clutch a lot of times this year uh, for the New York Islanders. So when you get into the goaltending, the goaltending is interesting because it seems like it's the other goalie who has been doing a lot of other things. Not the not the expected starter. It's kind of been the backup when you look at the overall numbers. So I'll look at Elias Sorokin here first. He's got a 24-19-12 and 12 record, a 2.99 and a .909. So Sorokin hasn't been bad this year, but considering by these standards, a 2.99 and a .909, are not exceeding his expectations. If we're talking about an average goaltender, he's doing not terrible, but this does not exceed his expectations as well. It's kind of disappointing, to be honest. Um, so then you wonder, well, how is the team winning games if Sorokin's not carrying them? Because that was the general consensus uh, through last season, and me being a, a, a child I am, um, I was one that I, I agree with that, and I said that on a lot of Islanders' videos. It's not the case, but Varlamov is the backup goalie who's been Really clutch down the stretch here for the Islanders. Uh, 14, 8, and 4, a 2.60 goals against average and a .918 save percentage. He's been a player who has really impressed me all throughout this year. Um, I I honestly thought that Vorlamov was going to retire two years ago. Nope, he's still there. So it, it's good to see that the two Russian goalies are doing very well on an Islanders team that desperately needs the goaltending. And again, the Islanders, people forget that this team made the conference finals back-to-back two years ago. It wasn't long, or not two years ago, four, three years ago. So it wasn't that, I'm getting my dates myself. It wasn't that long ago since this team went on that run and obviously got knocked out by Tampa both times. But I really do think this is pretty much the same core. I know there's a few guys who have left. There's a few guys who have come in, but this is pretty much the same core of guys who were there for that run. Do I think they can beat Carolina? Absolutely. I think this team with, with the way people underrate them, with the way people say that, oh, that's just the overtime points. And I get it. I agree. As a Flyers fan, it makes me mad too because had they had like had they even lost like half of those in regulation, we'd be in the playoffs. But the Islanders still, they're, they're in it. They, they deserve to be in it. And people people like to write them off because of that. And I don't I don't believe that. I really do think this team can go far and go win it. Go, I don't know about... Maybe what a cup. Uh, I've seen crazier things happen, but obviously, I really do think that out of any of these teams, I think any of them have a shot at winning the cup. I think like last year, I kind of wrote off a couple of teams, and I was right about most of them. Um, but obviously, the biggest one was Florida. I, Florida. Um, I wrote off Florida numerous times last season, and nope, they ended up winning the uh, not winning the cup. They ended up going to the finals. So that's why you shouldn't write off a team that early. But regardless, I want to know your guys' thoughts. The Islanders are a team that. Uh, when you go back to the early days of the channel, when I was like in eighth grade, I used to really not like the Islanders. Um, that general consensus for me has changed. So Islanders fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Um, once your guys' final game is played on Thursday, I will be making your series preview. Um, they're going to be releasing over the next couple of days, so stay tuned for that. But regardless, th thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe down below. That would be greatly appreciated. We're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of the playoffs this year. Uh, we're getting, we're about 350 away, so I would appreciate all the subs I can get. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Adios.